Hello guys and welcome back to the Thermal Nods series. In this video I will go through the item ducts, all 24 of them. And uh, even though I planned to cover the attachments as well, that means servos, filters and retrievers, I'll have to skip them for now and take them in the next episode instead. But we have a lot to go through anyway, so don't, don't worry. So 24 iron ducts. Well, it's not really that bad because there are a few different variants, uh, but they all come in, uh, in three flavors, so to say. So let, let's go through the basic, the basic ones first. Normal iron ducts comes in two different types. It's the transparent one and the opaque one. And the only difference between these two is the cosmetical. You will see the items going through this one, but not here. And that is the same for all of these, uh, all of the other ones as well. So basically we can call these four different groups. If we remove all the opaque ones, we have four left. So that gives us the normal item ducts. And I will cover the vacuum and dense later, so we'll get back to that. But normal and fast. The fast ones are called impulse item ducts, and they, but other than that, they function very much the same. So what's the difference when we jump over to this side? Well, these are signal and plated, all of these. And signal and plated ducts means that they can also carry RF. We had this for the fluid ducts as well, if you remember. Same name, same function. These will carry RF and items at the same time in any direction. And just like before, they come in opaque and transparent. And also that these are normal item ducts and these are impulse item ducts. So to summarize, they can be fast and they can be slow and they can carry RF or not. The final differences is that we have the vacuum and dense. Vacuum means that these ones will be considered closer than normal ones and the dense will be considered farther away. So I'll cover this in, uh, well, just 30 seconds. So let's go through the first most basic item duct setup. Uh, I will use servos in this episode, even though I'm not covering them really, but uh, I'm only using them to extract items basically. So you have to wait for the next episode to get more in depth. So this server will extract from the chest and send down the network. And since this one is the first, this is where they will end up. We will output eight at a time and they will try go down the line. However, we had only room for four here and we have room, oh, two there and two here. So even though we have lots of planks left in this chest, the server will notice that there is no room for planks here and neither here. So um, it will keep tracking that and not oversend at all. Moving on, we can also go through the dense and vacuum item ducts. We have the same setup with some stone here and stone here and even more stone here. So if we turn it on, the dense one will be considered to be farther away and uh, this one is closer. So in here we have room for two stone and here we have room for everything else. Okay, simple enough. The next example is with a vacuum and it works exactly the same. We have the same setup with the room for two planks here and lots of planks here. This one will be considered closer than the normal one. You can see that the, this was the first one that was sent, but well, the second one got here first. Okay, and you can combine these. Uh, let's uh, yeah, let's take this example first then. This will output 32 at the time, at maximum. I'm using a higher tier servo just for that. And this setup, I have 
two different vacuum uh, destinations, so to say. I have one vacuum or dense and, uh, and one normal. This means that this one is farther away than this one. So this one is the closest and then that one. And then the dense will always be after the normal. So this is the last one. This is the third. So let's take a look. First, second, third, and the final. Was it too fast? Let's do it again. Okay, ready? So uh, first, second, third, and fourth. Okay, so that's quite an, quite a straightforward. Perhaps this is not very logical, but at least it shows the vacuum and dense combined with the normal ones. So uh, another way, it's on, not only um, distance that can uh, affect where they end up. Uh, the servos, if you go high enough with the tiers, you can actually change where they should go. So nearest first is of course the first chest, or you can go farthest first. Or we can go to random chests or round robin. So if we turn this one on, it will take turns to go left and right. And then if we go to the nearest first, I think it's yeah, it's this one that is first. And of course, furthest first should go left instead. And as you have seen, I've covered the impulse atom ducts here as well. They are much faster than the normal atom ducts. But actually what really makes a big difference is, uh, well, a thing that also makes a big difference is what type of servo you use. So even though we're not covering servos in this, again, I really want to show this example. So here I have a setup with normal atom duct here, with a normal servo, the lowest tier. And then we have a fast item duct, the impulse, also with the same servo. And then we have the resonant servo with a normal item duct, and then a resonant servo with the impulse item duct. Because the difference between a normal and uh, with a low tier and a high tier servo is that this one actually gives a speed boost. You can see it in the text speed boost, boost three times. So if we now compare this atom, this impulse duct to this one, the only difference is the speed in the servo. So let's turn it on and see how it looks. There's a three second output time per, uh, per item in the normal servos. So you can see that the, uh, this chest will empty much faster than this one, even though the item duct is faster. But these two are emptying at the same pace. The only difference is how fast they get through the item duct. So you want to empty an inventory fast, use high tier. If you want things to go fast in the network, use the impulse and so on. And if it's not important, yes, use a low tier. So the final example for today is the in signal and plated ducts. Uh, you have seen this before, so I'm just going to have two very simple, simple um, examples. We have a redstone furnace that outputs coal, or charcoal of course, into this one. It's redstone controlled, so it will not turn on until I say so. Here we have a steam dynamo into an energy cell, and this energy cell will input from the bottom and then output here with a hardened flux duct, that's 4000 RF per tick, that's the same as the item duct. So if we turn this on, let's see how it looks. Now we're using the internal buffer only, and this one will output the charcoal sent over here, and then the red, the RF will charge this one up again, and also feed the cell and the rest of the network, of course. So this only demonstrates that items can go one way and RF the other one other way. It doesn't really matter. They, they can go both the same way and, and so on. 
So here we have a slightly different setup, pretty much the same. It doesn't have any, let me borrow those. No uh, energy cell here, but I'm using the, uh, the item duct all the way here and then the uh, steam dynamo is just outputting directly back. So no need for uh, energy cell here. Perhaps not the best example, but I just wanted to show that item ducts and RF can carry, can be carried in the same duct. Okay, so that's how much I wanted to go through in this video. Next up we have attachments, that's the servos in detail, we have filters and retrievers, and I'll cover them in the next episode. Hope I'll see you then, so take care and bye bye.